Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another antique store haul. Everything we're going to be looking at today came from Patriot Antique Center in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Unfortunately, at the time of my visit, this place was closing down. I was very sad because I had, you know, booked it in my places to go, and I got there, but there was still a ton of good stuff left. And there were a lot of good sales going on. Um, some people had like 75% off. There were a couple booths that had like 20% off still, even though the place was closing. And it's like, I, I can tell those people weren't ready to let their stuff go for cheap. But I walked out with, I think a little over, or maybe even just a little under $100 worth of stuff. Maybe, I don't remember how much it was. If I find my receipts, I'll show you guys, or I'll tell you guys how much everything was. So I'll try to remember how much the stuff was with the sales. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Believe these awesome jacks in their original bag here were, um, I think they were 50 off, or maybe even 65% off. I think maybe they were 65% off. Marked at seven, so 350 would be half, so maybe just like two bucks or something. The jacks and the ball are still in there, but I loved the graphics on the little bag. This is kind of like a vinyl-y, like mesh, not mesh bag, but I thought it was mesh because of the way the um, the top of the bag is, but you get the idea. So that was fun. I found this little um, like celluloid sailboat pin. I don't know who makes it. Oh, it says made in England. So that was really interesting. So that might go in my junk jar. Oh, does it say something on there? No, maybe that's just design. That's just design on the sales, but that's cool. I got a fish brooch. I'm not exactly sure of the age. I think it was 65% off, if I'm not mistaken, but I loved the different colors on the scales. Like I said, I don't think there's a maker's mark on it, but that was so inexpensive with the sale, I just had to pick it up. I got a thing for fish. I don't know what it is. These were half off, 350. There's a bunch of pins in here. So let me go ahead and take a look at what's in here. There was one particular pin that I wanted. So that's why I bought the whole bag for 350. So there were five pins for 350, which I felt was a really fair price. So we've got this one for Sunnyside Blowout. It's a 10th anniversary pin from September 14th and 15th of 1985. There's one for Buccaneers. I'm a Buccaneer. Buccaneer dog and cat food. Maybe this is something that an employee was given for some Buccaneer grocery store. I could be very wrong about that. I don't know hardly anything. <laughs> this is the one that I was really after. This is probably from the 70s when this very famous um, poster of Farrah Fawcett came out, which I have, by the way, and love. So I will definitely be keeping that one. It says, Badge Amint LaSalle, Illinois, 61301. So I will be keeping Farah. We've got the button, south of 86, Hallandale, Florida. And then we've got this turn A pin, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'll put a link to it in the, like, down below right here once I figure out what it means. That's a new term to me. So I'm sure you all noticed before that I found a really awesome old postcard box. Uh, I think that was seven, maybe 65% off of $6. So I had to pick that up. And these came, this one came from a booth that was 25% off. So I paid, what, 30 to $1.13 for this uh, December postcard. Very deco, it's got a boy, Looks like a, almost looks like a sailor, but I don't think it is. And I think that's a postcard, yep. So that was a good pickup. I don't normally go for the pinup cards with movie stars on them, even though they are very, very sexy. I mean, we've got Deborah Paget in a very nautical environment, but 
Like I said, I normally like to go for the unknown models, like the cheesecake. Not that this isn't cheesecake, but I'm sure you guys are picking up what I'm laying down. So this was $3. Couldn't say no to that. I think it was 3 Yeah, it was 3 because half of 4 is 2, and then half of 2 is 1. That's the 25%. So this was only $3. I did find a Wade figure, and this one is of a monkey, I think. These little Wades are so fun. Made in England. I think he was only like $2, dollar or two. Okay, this is hilarious. And I think this was also on sale. It's a, um, it's the male ego. It's what he wishes his, um, manhood looked like or how big he, uh, his manhood is or, I can't talk. It's how big he wishes his manhood was. So that was pretty funny. And I think this little ball unscrews. It does. I don't know what it goes to, but I thought that was absolutely hilarious. So I had to pick that up. And then this was, what is this? I don't remember this. Oh yeah. We got a Smokey the Bear pin and that was a dollar 12 off. So, a, so call it three thirty eight that I paid for that. So that'll go in my junk jar. It's a pin. I think it folds over the collar of your shirt. I'm helping Smokey prevent forest fires. So that was definitely a great pickup. So for $2.25, I got a really awesome 1938 Dr. Scholl's Curatex foot plaster tin. See, it is marked right here, 1938, by the Scholl Manufacturing Company. I know that a lot of people like to decorate their bathrooms with the old tins, or they just like to collect them because they're really fun. So this one will be up for grabs at a sale, I think maybe $10, $12. Remember folks, if you're interested in something that I feature in a haul video and I say it's for sale, you can always message me. I do live sales once a week. So if you would like me to hold it until my live sale, I can always do that and just invoice you for the item you're interested in from the haul and the stuff you purchase from the sale and bundle it all together to save you on shipping. So yeah, if, again, um, you can message me at skullking95680 at yahoo.com. It is down below in the description box. So again, if you see something you're interested in and I say it's for sale, you can always message me there. For $3.75, I found the intimate biography of James Dean called Little Boy Lost. I have a lot of books, y'all, and um, you'll see in a minute exactly what I'm talking about. So I finished Death of a Model, which was about the unfortunate murder of Linda Sobeck, who was an aspiring model, and um, yeah, that whole story was very interesting. It was a Forensic Files episode. I forget the name of it. If I remember it, I'll put it down in the description box below. And uh, no, it's called Photo Finish. That's the episode of Forensic Files that it's called. It's called Photo Finish. And the one thing that I like a lot about the true crime books are that they give you a lot more information than what the Forensic Files episode tells you. Or, you know, like any of those other true crime TV shows. Like the books give you more details than what the show is able to. So... That was definitely a good pickup. Anyway, yeah, so I paid three seventy five for that. I am looking forward to reading more about James Dean's life. So that'll be really fun to read. I did get a whole stack of cards, and I believe these were, I think, $0.35 cents for all of them, which was a steal of a deal. There's some really cute ones in here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the idea. I'll probably keep a few of them, and then I will sell the rest of them. But yeah, 35 cents, you just cannot say no to that. Now this was, let's see, so 750, half of that's 375, so what's half of 375, whatever that is. A dollar and change or something like that. But anyway, Fresh M.A. Bruder and Sons Incorporated Paint by John, it's John Caruso Painting uh, from New Jersey. I love this paper ad because it's got a beautiful, sexy lady sitting on a stool. This is probably from the 40s or 50s. Like I said, I absolutely love the images of a lady that would be so cool framed, don't you think? 
I got for, let's see, so 25% off of five. So about, again, $3.75. I got a 1950, let's see. I think it's from like 1954 or 1955. Oh, it's from 1954. It says it right on the tag. It's got Debbie Reynolds on it. You guys know I love my movie land or my old Hollywood ephemera. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for that stuff. I try not to buy all of it because I know I will be in the exact same position I was with a bunch of other ephemera. <laughs> so I bought that magazine. I'll pilfer through it. And if it's there's nothing in there that I'm interested in, I'll just resell it. So that was a good pickup. All right, and last book for this portion of the video. I found Entertainment Weekly, the 100 greatest TV shows of all time. Uh, this was done, it says by Entertainment Weekly. And what did I pay for this? I think it was written on the back. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna see how much I paid for this because I don't remember. I know it was on here. I didn't pay much for it, I know that. Oh, paid $4. So $3 essentially for that. So there's like Perry Mason, Mary Tyler Moore, I Love Lucy, Star Trek. This goes all the way up through the 90s, I think. I forget what year this is from, but I think it's from the 90s. So totally, totally cool. All right, and moving right along, look at all this goodness that I got at this antique store. Now, the prices that you see on here are not the prices that I paid. They were upwards of 80% off. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I found a little trinket box. It's got flowers on it, hinged. Got red velvet on the inside. That was, I believe, $1.50. So I picked that up. I found a Carter's Contract typewriter ribbon tin. That was $5 for Underwood. Not sure if Katie has that one or not, but I have a couple of tins that I want to put together and offer up at a sale, because I know that you all like them. So I picked that one up. This little frog here was, I believe, 80% off. He was originally 250, and then he was marked down to 63 cents. Now, there is, I guess what you could call a chip right here, but it was done during manufacturing because it's glazed over. So that's cute, that's like four or five bucks at a sale. This is a really interesting creamer and sugar set. Uh, it was originally $4 a piece, but I got them half off, so I paid four for the set. It's really interesting with that cherub in the um, tree playing a flute, it looks like. Let me take off one of the tags real quick so we can see who makes this, because this is a really unique set. So it looks like it is Schaller, and it was made in Bavaria. Very, very neat set. I think this is probably a 14 to maybe $16 set at a sale. Again, if you are interested in anything, you can always let me know down below what you're interested in. Or no, email me and let me know what you're interested in. I'll quote you a price for it. And I can save it for you until my next sale, which you guys know I host every week. Oh, this was really cool. I got this for 50 cents. It looks deco-y, like maybe 30s or 40s. It's marked Japan on the back. Oop, TT, made in Japan. I guess they got that for 50 cents. That's probably eight bucks, $10 maybe. I love the contrast of the green and the yellow. It probably held something, like maybe some large creamers or some, or like sugar bowls or something. But you could put this on the table at like a party, throw pretzels on one side, maybe peanuts on another side. Great little serving dish. Now, I could not resist this cute little doggy planter. Uh, he was half off, so I did pay nine. That was my most expensive purchase. Or like more than I would typically pay for a planter, but he's absolutely adorable. He's carrying a, uh, looks like a wheelbarrow, and then he's just parading around with it. So I had to pick that up. Now I'm sure you all are noticing this really awesome Ellie Smith Moon and Stars Amber Compote. That will definitely be up for grabs at a sale coming soon. 
I felt so bad. I found a green one a while ago, and Tracy Shepard bought it, and I didn't wrap the lid well enough, and the lid was broken. I felt so bad. But this one, I think I have a better idea as to how to wrap it this time. So, hopefully that won't break. And I paid about $7.88. It was originally $22.50. I got it 65% off. What a steal of a deal, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all, as far as I know. So this really, really adorable basket here has got doves on it, got a floral arrangement on it, and I think it was half, was it half off or just regularly $2.49? Even still, still it's such a great price. That'll probably be maybe $12, $14 because it's in such good condition. And it goes with like farmhouse and shabby chic, which I know is still kind of in right now. For $2.50, I picked up another vintage ceramic salt box. I love the images of the wine and the martini and the cocktail olives. It's got crazing all over it, so you know it's an older piece. That, probably 12, 14 bucks. And then I found this glass um, figurine. I don't know what it is. It looks like a tiger of some sort. The really fragile part is the tail. Like, look how thin that tip is. So that, that was, I think, about a buck 50 on that. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna ask for it. Then I found this really awesome chalkware turtle, definitely from the 70s. Uh, that was probably half off, maybe 75 off. The guy didn't write the discount price on the other receipt. The first place, or the first building that I went into, the guy wrote the discounted price. He, the other guy didn't do that, so I can't remember if he was half or if he was like maybe 75 off. He was probably 75 off. But he is absolutely, absolutely adorable. I could not resist that. Okay, this is a little naughty, but I thought it was funny. It was a buck fifty. It says, look what love did to me. Gag box. Can you open it up here? Maybe. And there's a pregnant lady in there. That's what love does. So that was just a really fun novelty. Had to pick that up. You guys already saw Mr. Frog, so Frog is gonna move. This is, I believe, to be a Hager piece. I have to clean that up. It looks like sticker residue of some sort. It does have the bottom, like that indicates to me that it's Hager. Paid a dollar for that, and she's probably 12, 14 bucks because of the pottery name. So I got another one of these dinner prayer ladies. Sorry guys, I'm holding the camera because there's just so much to look at. It says dinner prayer. Uh, I know there's a salt and pepper shaker set that goes with this. And it's made by Inesco, I know that. I got that for two bucks. That's probably eight at a live sale. Again, you can always message me if you're interested. Now the last thing I'd like to share with you all from this portion of the haul are these really awesome Twick Bake our baked potato pottery holders. They're from 1958. I got them for, I think it was like $4.80 for the six of them. So those were really fun. I couldn't leave those when I saw the booth was 80 off. I had to pick it up or pick them up. So yeah, those will probably be maybe $15, $16 for the set. So now we are moving right along. All right, you guys, and the last group of items I would like to share with you all are a bunch of true crime novels. I got 20 books for just $4. That is a steal of a deal. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out of the bag and I'm gonna share them with you all. So just give me one second and I will pull them all out. So I am a really big fan of true crime. I love all the true crime shows, Forensic Files, Cold Case Files, all those other crazy shows that depict a side of humanity that is not so humane. So, okay, so we got Blindside by David Klein. It's an explosive, original, psychosexual suspense story told with artistry. The debut of a major suspense writer. There's the back. I think this might be more of like a crime fiction novel, but I'll still take it for what it is. 
We've got The Stranger Beside Me, which is the shocking true story of Ted Bundy, the all-American boy who mass-murdered women. Dramatic, chilling, and shattering. So that was definitely a no-brainer. Had to pick that up. We've got The Cop Who Wouldn't Quit, a true story of Rick Nelson. His search for a killer was more than duty of justice. It became his obsession. So this is a little bit newer. This is from, most of these cases I would say are from like the 60s and up through the 90s. So this one is from 1997. Blood Trail. There's only one way to track a twisted killer. So this was from, oh, funny enough, Slaughter on a Shoestring uh, was on my grandmother's 59th birthday on October 29th, 1997. Hooker Andrea Slick Hendricks's beaten naked body was discovered in a roadside ditch near Stewartsville, Indiana. With no leads for police to follow, the case eventually went cold. But it wouldn't stay that way. In 2003, sadistic sexual predator Joseph W. Brown claimed to have strangled Hendricks with his favorite murder weapon, a shoelace from a woman's size 8 shoe. Totally blood-curdling, and again, I cannot wait to read these books. So we've got Reasonable Doubt, a true story of lust and murder in the American heartland. And this doesn't say when it happened, but I'm sure this is probably from the 90s, maybe early 2000s. We've got Innocent Blood, the true story of obsession and serial murder. Yeah, these are, these are definitely going to be some good reads. We have Robert Ressler, who actually was featured on Forensic Files. Justice is Served, a true story of greed, betrayal, and murder for hire. I don't think this one... Oh, this happened in 1969 because it says in 1971, two years after Marlene's death. So this is going to be a very interesting one to read. We've got Poison Dreams, a true story of murder, money, and family secrets. Again, awesome, awesome titles. I'm, I'm totally hooked on finding all these books. The Crime of the Century, the true, never-before-told story of Richard Speck, the most shocking mass murderer in America's history. And this happened in 1966. Uh, it says that Richard Franklin Speck murdered eight student nurses in their quiet Chicago townhouse. He broke in as his helpless victims slept, bound them one by one, and then stabbed, assaulted, and strangled all eight in a sadistic sexual frenzy. I hope I don't get demonetized for reading these titles but and some of those stories. But yeah, these are definitely going to be interesting, like I said about all of them. We've got Missing Beauty, written by Teresa Carpenter. And this one details a research scientist... And apparently they roamed Boston's porno district looking for sex. Very interesting. <laughs> We've got Total Recall Murder. The shocking true story of illicit passion premeditated murder. And the child who saw it all. And this happened in 1975. We've got Senatorial Privilege. I'm probably going to butcher this name. The Chappaquiddick. The Chappaquiddick Cover-Up by Leo Damore. And this happened in 1969. So I did get The Silence of the Lambs, and I didn't even realize it. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been to this place, so I forgot what books I picked up, but I did get a copy of The Silence of the Lambs. 
which was a psychological thriller so deftly woven and gripping that a reader could hardly get through one sentence fast enough to discover what's in the next. This one is of The Boston Strangler. Would you trust him? Would you let him into your home? Thirteen women did. They died terrifying deaths. So again, another great, interesting novel that has piqued my interest, and I'm excited to read. We've got the Lindbergh crime. You all know about the Lindbergh baby kidnapping that happened in the 30s, and I think this case actually... Um, I think the FBI came up with like a missing children's part of crime, I think, based on this case, if I'm not mistaken. So again... Who really killed the Lindbergh baby? Startling new revelations uncovered about the crime of the century. By Noel Ben. We've got The Dream of Ada. or I think it's Ada. Um, a true story of murder, obsession, and a small town. So this happened in 1984. I was negative... 10 when this came out. Negative 10 and two days. So this is the Denise Haraway case. Again, really fun, interesting, well, not really fun, but interesting case of crime, which I'm excited to read. So we've got Murder at 75 Birch by Richard T. Hensiak. The true story of family betrayal. So this actually was a Forensic Files episode. Um, it's for Betty and Glenn Wolsifer. I cannot remember, for the life of me, the name of the um, episode, but I do remember hearing about this case in a Forensic Files episode, so I'm excited to read more about that whole case. We've got Careless Whisperers, the Lake Waco Murders. So this happened in 1982. We've got the Union Secret, Murder in the Age of Aquarius, with new evidence and eight pages of dramatic photos. So this happened apparently in the 60s, or no. Ira Einhorn was a 1960s peacenik and new age guru. Holly Maddox was a beautiful Texas cheerleader and Ira's lover until her disappearance in 1977. So this happened in the late 70s. We've got Beyond Murder, the inside account of the Gainesville student murders, the serial sex slayer who bloodied a college town. And I don't know when this took place. But it looks like it's probably 60s, 70s, maybe. I'm not sure. But again, interesting title, very eye-catching, so I had to pick that up. All right, and the last book to conclude this haul, it's, it's a newer book. It came out in 2019, but a lot of the cases featured in this book are from, you know, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, it's Women Who Kill, and on the front we've got serial killer Eileen Wernos. So, like I said, I am a true crime novel freak. If I freaked any of you all out with the way I was reading some of these titles and some of the wording on here, I apologize. But when you're passionate about reading about true crime and you watch a lot of the shows, you gotta kinda get into it and, like, you know, you gotta put on that face of, like, holy cow, this is amazing, I can't believe I found all this great literature. So, folks, that is everything that I was able to pick up at the unfortunate closing of Patriot Antique Center in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Let me know down below in the comments section what were your favorite items from this haul. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!